Today on Macaulay Math, we're talking page two formulas. Intro. Okay, good day. I'm Professor Macaulay. This is Math 150 Pre-Calculus Lesson 28 on the page two formulas. Our goals for today. We're going to use multiple angle formulas to rewrite and evaluate trigonometric functions. We're going to use the power reducing formulas to rewrite and evaluate trigonometric functions. We're going to use the half angle formulas to rewrite and evaluate trigonometric functions. And we're going to use the product sum formulas to rewrite and evaluate trigonometric functions. I titled this lesson the page two trigonometric formulas because they are the second page of the trig identity cheat sheet. For my course, you will not be required to memorize these formulas, but do need to be familiar on how to both recognize these formulas as well as how to use them to complete various tasks, such as evaluating trigonometric expressions, simplifying trigonometric expressions, and verifying trigonometric identities. Let's get started. Okay, here are the page two formulas, and you use these page two formulas the way you use the page one formulas. And I must reiterate here that I am not going to make you memorize the page two formulas. You'll have your trig identity cheat sheet for the quizzes, and then for the test, I am going to make sure that you're memorizing the page one formulas, but the page two formulas will be on the back of the test. And we use these very, very similar to everything that we've used before. And the most important use for a big portion of these formulas on the back is a way to calculate the trig value of angle measures that are not on the unit circle, but can be manipulated into values that are on the unit circle. And basically all you're gonna do is go through and try and find a formula that applies to the example that you're given, and then use that to make your calculation. With that, there is no new math. I'm not really teaching you any new math. And so the types of problems that you're going to see are very similar to ones that you've seen in the past. You're just going to use different formulas. So let's get started here. For my first example, it says find sine to you, cosine to you, and tangent to you, given that the cosine of you is equal to negative 2 over 3, where the angle u is between pi over 2 and pi. Now I've drawn a diagram over here on the right hand side, and I've made a right triangle out of it, and I must again reiterate that when you're using values from a trig function, these are not measures of sides their proportions of sides. So I don't know that this is actually three. I don't know that this is actually negative two. I just know that the ratio between the hypotenuse and the adjacent side is going to be negative three over two. So if I wanna find the sine of two u, I'm gonna look at that first formula and the sine of two u is equal to two sine u cosine u. All right, well, I don't know what the sine of u is, but since I set up this right triangle, I can find a value that's going to be proportional to it using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm gonna call this y for right now and we'll use the Pythagorean theorem and we'll go negative two squared plus y squared is equal to three squared. So I get y squared is equal to, well, three squared is nine, negative two squared is four, nine minus four is five, so y equals the square root of five. So when they say they want to, us to find the sine of two u, I need two sine u cosine u. So that is the formula, two sine u cosine u and the cosine of u we already know we already know that that's negative two over three but the we need to know what the sine of u is the sine of u is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse and so the opposite side is y and the hypotenuse is three found out that y is the square root of five but we will go square root of five over three 
and we'll have two times the square root of five all over three. That will give us, when we multiply all of these out, that will give us positive times a positive times a negative is gonna give us negative for our final answer. Two times two is four times square root of five will be four square root of five, and then three times three is nine. And that is our final answer for the sine of 2u. The cosine of 2u, we'll go back up and check the formula. The cosine of 2u actually has three different formulas for it. And since I already know the cosine of u, I will just go the cosine of 2u is equal to 2 cosine squared u minus 1. 2 cosine squared u minus 1. And since we already know that the cosine of u is negative 2 over 3, come down here and go 2 times negative 2 over 3 squared minus 1. That will give us 2 times 4 over 9 minus 1, which will give us 8 over 9 minus, and then I need to change it to have a common denominator. And so 1 is 9 ninths, and that will give us a final answer of negative 1 ninth as our final answer for that. And then finally, the tangent of 2u. That formula, if we go back up here, it, there's only one formula. It's 2 tangent u over 1 minus tangent squared u. 2 tangent u over 1 minus tangent squared u. And I know what the cosine is, I know what the sine is. I don't have the tangent yet, but that's an easy thing to find. So we'll go tangent u is equal to, it will be opposite over adjacent. So y is my opposite side, square root of five over negative two. So negative square root of five over two is my tangent. And then I can just plug that in. So I'll have two times negative square root of five over two all over one minus negative square root of five all over two squared. And so on in the denominator here, this two and this two will cancel. That'll leave me negative square root of five in the top. And then in the bottom, when I square this part right here, I'll have one minus square root of five times square root of five is just five. And then two squared is four. And so I'll have square root of five. And then I have to have a common denominator. So this would be 4 over 4 minus 5 over 4. And just to save a little space, we'll go back up there. So I've got that negative square root of 5 on the top, and I'll have negative 1 fourth on the bottom. And so when you divide fractions, you flip and multiply. So I have negative square root of 5 times negative 4 over 1 which will leave me as a final answer, positive four square root of five as my final answer for tangent to you. Let's move on. It says use the half angle formulas to determine the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle 165. Now 165 degrees is not on the unit circle, but if I double this angle, 165 twice is 330 degrees, and that is on the unit circle. Now, you might be saying, hey, wait a minute, Mr. McCulley. It says use the half angle formulas, and that is how you use the half angle formulas. You are taking a number that's not on the unit circle and doubling it to get to an angle that's on the unit circle, and that's how that particular formula works, all right? And the way you think about it, is they want me to say the sine of 165. Well, that is equal to the sine, and we're trying to find that half angle formula, u over two. And so if 165, and I suppose I should have degrees there, is equal to u over two, then to get u by itself, I have to multiply both sides by two. That'll give me that 330. So this is the angle that we're going to be focusing on. So let's go and check out the formulas. And the half angle formula for sine says the sine of u over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine u over 2. Now, the reason that I have plus or minus here is because plus or minus is going to be dependent upon which quadrant that u is in. All right, so if u 
is 165. 165 is in the second quadrant. And so no matter what we do, the sine of an angle that is in the second quadrant is always going to be positive. All right. So let's make that calculation. The sine of 165 is equal to the sine of 330 all over 2, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of u, which in this case is 330, all over 2. And so the cosine of 330 is square root of 3 over 2. So I have the square root of 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 all over 2. Now I've got a lot of square roots in there, but let's simplify a little bit at least. And so on the top here, I have to get a like term. So I will have the square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 3 over 2 all over 2. And then when I combine these two, I'll have the square root of 2 minus square root of 3 all over 2. And that's just that top fraction. And then I have this bottom part all over 2. And so when I divide this expression, which is an irrational number, divided by 2, divided by 2 again, remember when you divide a fraction by a fraction, you flip that fraction and multiply. And so I will have 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. And then 2 is 2 over 1. So when I flip it, it'll be 1 over 2. So here I will have the square root of 2 minus square root of 3 all over 4. And I can take the square root of 4, which will give me the square root of 2 minus square root of 3 all over 2. Now again, it starts off as plus or minus, but we said that since 165 is in the first quadrant, the sign is always going to be positive. So it'll be positive here, positive here, positive here, positive here, positive here, and my final answer is positive. All right, let's do the cosine of 165, which will be the cosine of 330 all over 2. And if I look at that formula, that formula is almost exactly the same, except instead of a minus, I have a plus. So we can do some shortcut here because it is exactly the same, except for in a minus, it has a plus. So here I will go plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of 330 all over 2. And so all of this work that we've already done here will be exactly the same, except instead of this minus, we'll have a plus. And so to try and keep this a little bit shorter, so to keep this a little bit shorter, we will say the square root of 2 plus square root of 3 all over 2. Now we got to determine plus or minus. Now in the second quadrant, and what I mean by that second quadrant, 165 degrees is right here. And so since in this quadrant, the second quadrant, all your cosine values, your x values are negative, this is gonna end up being negative. We put a box around it and we're finished. Finally, the tangent of 165 degrees, that tangent rule for the half angle formula, and there are two, and we can use either one. We don't have to calculate them both. And so I'll just use this top one right here. The tangent of 165 is equal to the tangent of 330 degrees over two. And so that is one minus the cosine of 330 all over the sine of 330. Now, at, so I can calculate each of these. I'll have one minus the cosine of 330 is square root of three all over two. And then the sine of 330, since sine is in the fourth quadrant, it's negative. So I'll have negative a half. 
Now to combine the terms on the fraction, I have to have a common denominator. So I'll go two over two minus the square root of three over two, all over negative one half. I'll combine what's on the top. That will give me two minus square root of three all over two. But I still have this negative one half on the bottom. Now to divide a fraction by another fraction, we've done this a couple times already, so we're going to flip and multiply. So I have two minus square root of three all over two, now times the reciprocal of this bigger denominator, which will now be negative two over one. These twos cancel, and so this becomes just a one, but it's a negative. So my final answer, I have to distribute the negative, negative one times positive two will give me negative two, and then negative one times negative square root of three will give me positive square root of three. And we are finished with that one. Okay, next example it says you use the product to sum formula to write the product as a sum or a difference. So I've got four times the cosine of pi over three times the sine of five pi over six. If I come over here to the product to sum formulas, here is a cosine times a sine. It'll give me a half of sine u plus v minus sine of u minus v. All right, and so let's plug in. So I've got that four, and that, that four is not part of the expression. So I'm gonna put a parenthesis here for that whole four. And then I have a half, and that half is going to distribute, it's got a parenthesis, the sine of it's the sum of u and v for the first one so pi over three plus five pi over six and then it's minus sine and then that the formula says it's the difference so pi over three minus five pi over six so let's do a little simplifying here four times a half is going to be two and then I got to add fractions. So I've got the sine and I need to change thirds into six. Well, if I multiply three times two, I get six. So when I multiply pi over three times two over two, I get two pi over six plus five pi over six minus the sine of two pi over six minus five pi over six. And so, We'll do the subtractions. The two stays the same. And so I have the sine of, let's see, two plus five will be seven pi over six. Now that doesn't reduce. I'll have minus, and then I'll have the sine. Two pi over six minus five pi over six will be negative three pi over six. Now negative three over six becomes a half. So I have negative pi over two. And so if you remember your even odd formulas, the sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. We can simplify a little bit more and say that this is two sine of seven pi over six. And then since sine of negative one half is equal to negative sine of one half. We can make this a plus sine of pi over two. Put a box around that whole thing and say we're finished. All right, last example. Use the sum to product formulas to write the sum or difference as a product. And so I have a sum of two signs. So we'll go back up to the double angle formula. And I have the sum of two sines. So that's going to become two times the sine of those two added divided by two times the cosine of the difference of x and y divided by two. So let's use that formula. And we will get that this is equal to two times the sine of x plus 5x all over 2 times the cosine of x minus 5x all over 2. 
and we can simplify that. So I'll have two sine x plus five x is six x divided by two is three x. And then the cosine x minus five x is negative four x divided by two is two x. It's actually negative two x. And then again, you should recall that the cosine of negative x is just the cosine of x. So I can rewrite this as two sine three x cosine two x. And that is it. All right, folks, that's all I got for today. So the Star Wars fun fact of the day. Hayden Christensen begged George Lucas to allow him to, to play in the Darth Vader suit for the final scene of Revenge of the Sith. George Lucas agreed. I think that that was a mistake because I don't think he was tall enough or big enough and he looked like a kid in a Darth Vader mask. But what do I know? Just a math teacher. That's all I got for today, folks. You have a great day. Goodbye.